Seamus Hickey is with us. Seamus, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Jer. I'm good. I'm nervous, nervously anticipating the weekend, but I'm good. Um, what has you nervous as a matter of interest, specifically about Kilkenny? If I was to sum it up very simply, right? So 12 months ago, same teams met. I think Kilkenny have gotten better. I think they're a better squad. Um, I think they're a more rounded team. And I'm not sure Limerick are better. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, especially with the losses of, of, of Sean Finn. Declan is, you know, Declan Hannon, centre back, is, you know, given every chance to play. But, you know, in terms of fitness, in terms of level of performance this year, I'm just not as confident. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely think Kenny are a better team. Was the game a bit weird last year in that Limerick kind of let Kilkenny get back into it and that maybe they won't do that this year? Now, I think last year was a bit strange because I do think Limerick were were the better team. It's just that Kilkenny had a knack of hanging around a game where I would say they were, you know, they, they really couldn't get ahead of Limerick at any stage. Um, they were Limerick was, were just not able to separate themselves. I don't see this final going the same way. I, I really do. You know, I, I would probably see Kilkenny as more of the aggressors this time. Um, like considering what Galway did in the first half against Limerick, just to kind of destabilize them, uh, kind of really attack their puck out, uh, you know, really get to grips with the middle third. Like Kilkenny are really well equipped to do that. Uh, you know, and I think, especially with own Cody playing the way he is, Adrian Mullen really operating well now around the middle after his injury troubles early in the year. Uh, on Cody's boots have been moving faster than ever. Uh, I'm a big fan of those. So, but like, it's just, it, I do think they're they're a better team. And TJ is giving them what TJ does. Um, really, really good leadership, good decision making, uh, ability to win dirty ball. He's not he's not burning pace. He's not getting into space as much as he used to. But um, absolutely as, as dangerous under a high ball and his ability to distribute so you know, for me they're a really daunting proposition for, for this team and uh, look obviously there's been league games in between but last year's All-Ireland Final does seem particularly relevant in, in the first half in particular one of the things that kept Kilkenny oh. in it was TJ's freeze and um, maybe don't foul as much this year I realise it's very easy for me to say that and I'm not involved but it might be a good idea to just talk about that and try and plan for it yeah but so like Limerick's discipline has ebbed and flowed. Um, like the first half against Galway, uh, Evan Island scored seven points from freeze. Um, and it really was key to Galway pushing Limerick to the brink, um, say, you know, with a six point lead and a goal chance uh, after 20, 25 minutes. So, you know, if, if, Limerick, if Limerick's tackling is frenetic, if it's not composed, well, then Limerick are actually a, a free machine. Uh, they, they, give away, they give away a lot. Um, and now with the police completely different. John Keenan now is 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 uh, ref in the game. His first All Ireland final. He typically lets play flow. Typically, um, calls you know are typically well earned. I would say with John Keenan. So maybe maybe that's a good thing for Limerick. Uh, but it really is. You have to get your discipline right, um, especially against Kilkenny, because you know I would say even. More, like, this year, their, I think their scores from play have been far better. They've been far more efficient uh, from play. Up around 65% of their, their shots are actually going over the bars compared to Limerick is about half. You know, it's about 50-55%. So Kilkenny's efficiency from play is better, but TJ is still automatic. So if you're giving away a freeze uh, from your own 45 up the field, then, then you're probably giving your given them an opportunity. So it is it is worth talking about and you can talk about those things. But ultimately, composure is entirely about how you handle uh, the circumstances and how they change in a very pressurised environment. Uh, and there's nothing more pressurised than, than the game coming Sunday. And, and like, it shouldn't matter, but it clearly does that there's history on the line with a four in a row like how do they deal with that? How do they, I mean, obviously we know Caroline Curd, they talk about her all the time. So, should be earning their corn this week but what can they actually do so, so it, to me it's funny the history side of things from a, just from a pure Limerick's perspective it, it hasn't really been spoken about it, from a Limerick in a Limerick context in a Limerick public it's not really a topic conversation and most of the topic conversation this year was are we going to make it out of Munster um, are we you know the, the Galway semi-final considering how tight it was last year uh, we got a bit of confidence from the Munster final against Clare and actually pulling out a result but it, it really is getting like you know 
you know, survive and progress is really the, has been the Limerick theme for the last two years. Even last year in the three in a row, some of that three in a row talk was, was damped down by the fact of these games are super close and, you know, we're really just trying to survive in a lot of these games. Um, you know, I think this year they have gotten into more of a, a rhythm than I would say at times last year. It really, really was a struggle. Um, really was from the Munster Championship, Munster Final, uh, and then the other final, semi-final against Galway last year was, but it was a struggle. And then top it off then, I nearly got sick in uh, the Hogan stand last year. It was so nervous and so tight. Um, I'm not great to watch games at the best of times. But, uh, well, I was going to say, do you, are the players feeling the same? I mean, you, you, you know them very well. Are so they're not feeling. They're not feeling that. They're, what they're basically like, uh, it's particularly you know, when it's when it's on the field, it's far easier to play these games uh, than it is watching. So watching and supporting, you've got you've got the ability to, and particularly from a sports psychology side of things, as a player, it's next ball. It's it's uh, you know putting the last either positive or negative thing behind you. Uh, and you, you're, you're affecting the game in the next ball that comes your way. So, you know, there's a far more element of control for a player. Um, and, and even with the ebbs and flows of games, momentum and different things, uh, you still have that element of, 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 of affecting the outcome. So, um, you know, I can only <laughs> I can only shout so loud. But so it's the, for me, this time, when how do you manage it? Karen Curd is constantly preaching same it's constantly and, and you see this in, in sports uh, in sports media especially like you've got players are just it's it's a monotony it, they get into a groove of next game of you know, concentrate on the one, one minute at a time and don't get ahead of ourselves respect the opposition you know that you actually become hypnotized uh, to that and and you end up saying things that you know you, you don't necessarily believe but you're like these it's banal it's going to get me through this and for my mental focus I'm just going to say these things that don't affect me either way so like I'm not going to sing there I'm not going to put them down to give them an, an edge I'm going to talk them up I'm going to you know you end up saying a lot of stuff you don't believe like uh, you, you just get into that uh, autom- automatic automated uh, space so and from a sports psychology it is it's, it's routine it's rhythm it's it's keeping things the same and your approach the same your preparation the same um, and does four in a row have an extra stake for this Limerick team? I don't think so, because I genuinely don't think, and I know the players, they're not obsessed with history. Okay. They're obsessed with winning. Well, let, let me let me do something slightly different then. Uh, th- it's so difficult to do four in a row because by the end of that third slash fourth year, everybody has seen every second of you and, and the piranhas are biting as you go along the carcass of, of your dreams. And yeah. so maybe that's the four in a row might not be a psychological thing. It might just be that it's so hard to do because you have to be perfect four years in a row to get there. 100%. And, and what I absolutely love and what I really, really thought that you know John Kiley and, and, and Paul Knurk now he was forced by circumstance uh, but the Will who moved to centre back last like uh, the semi-final against Galway it was it was a complete change because Limerick have been prepared for by opposition pretty much the exact same way since 2018 because it has been much it's pretty much been the same 15 more or less uh, give or take you know Mike Casey got hurt uh, Barry Nash came in Richie English was in there and you know Changes maybe around the full back line, sometimes change in the full forward line, depending on whether it's Peter Casey or, you know, whether it's Graham Mulcahy. So there's been small change, but largely the blueprint is the same. And teams prepare for Limerick to pretty much the same way. And it looked like last year and this year that teams were finding a way to, 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 to tame them. Uh, and to kind of bring the fight down to close quarters, whereas in 2021, really, it was uh, Limerick blew out everybody uh, by by large large margin. So, um, you know, this year, and forced by circumstance of a key player at centre back, and I didn't like it. You know, I was nervous enough about Declan, you know, but trying something different, even something as, as simple as key into Keen Lynch to midfield, uh, and Will O'Donoghue back to centre back. How how effective Will was at centre back? we can talk about it. I think he grew into the game in the semi-final, but the first half, it really didn't look comfortable. But that in itself has changed the way the opposition now has to prepare. They don't know whether Declan's going to start. They don't know whether Keane Lynch is going to be 11 or 9. They don't know whether, whether Will O'Donoghue, who is you know imperious around the middle, whether he's going to be hoovering up, breaking ball and you know give dishing out collisions around the middle or whether he's actually going to be holding at 6 and whether you can actually drag him around. So you actually do have to prepare for them differently now. Uh, because of the personnel uh, and to me that's 
that, that, that has positives insofar as it keeps the opposition guessing. But you know, for the negative is obviously that you know, I, I've, I would argue that Limerick are, are, are far more stable and and, and better organised uh, with Declan that, that at six. So, it, but but it, that unknown, that that guessing, like for us in 2007, we played Kilkenny. It was uh, it was the expectation of the six forwards of Henry Shefflin at eleven. And then Henry Shefflin then ends up at 14 at the edge of the square. Eddie Brennan goes into the corner instead of the wing. And in the first 10 minutes, they had two goals because of, let's say, the the disturbance uh, and the, I suppose, the unpreparedness for the change. Uh, and, and if you don't plan for all the eventualities, you can get caught by one. Yeah, uh, it did feel a little bit like... Um, it sounded like they were backing Willow Dunhu learning experience to be better that was certainly um, the interpretation during the week from what John Kiley was saying to Ashling uh, when we Sarah Donovan on she was like oh that might have been the, the cat creeping gently out of the bag with uh, he'll be a better player for that experience it's like okay 100%. yeah so um, I don't think we'd be surprised if Declan didn't make it this weekend at this point but it obviously would be a blow yeah I worry wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't make it uh, because you know it, the the knee injury sustained is, is is it's one of those things where if you have if you have a, a four month season uh, and you've got six weeks uh, to recover, then get game time to prepare yourself for the latter stages, you've got chance. But uh, really, when the the All Ireland final is your <laughs> is your testing ground, I don't know how I don't know how you 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 go into that, uh, particularly with a, a position as, as important as centre back, guessing. Um, you now, if they pick him, it means they're sure. Um, but also, if they pick him, he might not start. So <laughs> there's, there's, there's that's the gamesmanship. And Limerick haven't really been traditionally known for that in the last four or five years. And maybe that's an ace in the sleep. Yeah. One, one last thing um, is Derek Ling Kilkenny also a different challenge from Cody's, and that it's the start of it or something. And so you come automatically with just fresh ideas and innovations and some of them will work and some of them won't but whatever about it it's certainly a different challenge as a result of it just being a new voice and a, a new plan of action I personally don't think it's that different um, I don't think that the Derek Link Kenny is much different to, 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 the, to Brian Cody now what I will say is that the dynamic and it looks like the 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 bond and the, and the, the team dynamic seems to be better so it, you know, you can argue that that's different, but fundamentally, in terms of tactically how they play the game, I haven't seen anything dramatically different. Uh, you know, even they might set up for they set up for puck outs slightly different in terms of their, their defensive setup for for opposition puck outs, but it's not dramatic. Um, I, I don't see Kilkenny as being that different a hurling proposition. What's different is confidence, um, unity, and, and and how they play the game. I think it is it just flows better this year uh, than it did last year, and and part of that is just because of the really good balance that he's got between the incredibly experienced bench that he has, the younger players that he's given opportunities to, uh, and then the leaders that are emerging from you know the, the likes of the Cody's and the Mullins uh, to to take the burden off TJ. So it's really really good balancing uh, that that Derek has done, and and it does seem like light touch leadership that is you know that that is good for the whole. Yeah, this rivalry is now a classic. Like this is this this has become obviously Limerick and Clare over the last couple of years has been a classic, but it, it's the hallmark of a great team. You can have more than one rival, and uh, if they win, they cement themselves. I know the history isn't a big thing, but it is like this will be. In, they're they're on the brink of being an all. They're already a really great team, but this is all time greatness that awaits them. Yeah, like the whole run started in 2018 in the quarter final by beating Kilkenny by a point in thirds. Like, so ask anybody about 2018 when when it was that we we actually believed we could do something, and it was that game. Uh, it was it was beating Kilkenny after all the close calls, the near misses, the heartbreaks in you know 14 and 12. Uh, you know, go back to 2007, what happened? You know, so it, it really was a case of you know. The, it, the breakthrough happened in, in Thurles that day when Tom Morrissey scored an incredible score, um, you know, from the sideline under the the new stand. So, like, yes, I I, I do think that Kilkenny will always be in the crosshairs because, uh, like, the nineteen seventy three team Limerick team is celebrating fifty years this year. They beat Kilkenny in that final and were beaten by the Kilkenny the following year. So, like that that for Limerick is always there. Uh, that they have always been the obstacle when we're trying to do something. Um, and when we're trying to establish ourselves, you know, and it has been the case, particularly when we thought we were going places in in, in fourteen, yeah. uh, it was so for me. 
it is a good, it is a rivalry uh, and for Limerick it means something Seamus I hope the nausea isn't too overwhelming enjoy as much of the game as you can thanks a million thanks guys